let us go into the house of the Lord on the first Sunday in 2023. Aren't you glad that you have seen 2023? Give God a great big hand praise. Just turn and wave at your neighbor. Wave at your neighbors if you're waving at your neighbors. You just don't care. How y'all doing today, choir? Amen. Come on, let's bow our heads in the word of thanks unto God. Give us something there. Something there. Give us a song or something. Amen. All right, that's what you're going to give me? Okay. <laughs> Amen. Bow your heads right now and just whisper a word of prayer. Give us the prayer lights and just start thanking God for allowing, for him allowing you to see 2023. But thank him, first of all, that you saw 2021, 2022. Thank him that you have come through danger seen and unseen in 2023. When we get to heaven, we're going to be grateful to God for two things. We're going to be grateful to God because God had blessed us through valley experience, hills and mountains, things that we could see. But we're also going to thank God because he's going to reveal to us that there were some things that we went through in 2022 that was harmful, dangerous, upsetting, disappointing to us. But somehow he blurred our vision where we did not see those kinds of things that could have happened in our life. So we need to thank God for what he's done for us in 2022 and thank God for what he did for us that we did not see in 2022. Come on, give God some praise in the house. I don't know about you, but I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. And I'm going to thank him today because I want it to be the pace for me for the rest of the year. And so you start the year off right and you'll discover that you'll end up right. If you start the year off praising God, you'll end up praising God. And weeping man do it for a night, but in the morning you'll still be praising God. Have I got a witness in the house? Amen. Come on, give God another, another great big praise right now. Oh, eternal God, our Father, we thank you for watching over us for 52 weeks, 365 days in 2022. We thank you, God, for there were some sleepless nights, but somehow you kept us from all hurt, harm, and danger during those midnight moments. We thank you, Lord, for protecting us and keeping your arms of protection all around us. We thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit that spoke to us time and time again in 2022. But God, we thank you because you allowed us to come into the house of praise and worship during 2022. And there were so many events that we couldn't do in 2021 and 2020, but somehow we were able to do some of those things, gathering with our families and friends and now, God, we are praying that there will be complete restoration in 2023. God, we're praying that you will preserve our health. God, we're praying that you will stabilize our mind. God, we're praying that you will be inside of our bodies. God, we are praying that you will protect our family. God, we are praying that you will see to it that your nation is taken care of. God, we're believing it right now in the name of Jesus. And we're already committed to praise you and to worship you the rest of this year. But we know that we will not be able to do that if you don't walk with us, talk with us, stay with us, encourage us. And we're believing that in the name of Jesus. And now, God, on this first Sunday in 2023, we pray that if there are distractions, that you will help us to deal with those distractions, that we might focus in on you today. We thank you. For that grace that has been so amazing that saved a wretch like us be with this choir and this congregation in jesus name we pray and all of the people of god shouted amen give god another great big hand praise wave at your neighbor one more time as if to say happy new year
And there will be victory. There will be victory after this. Say choir. God's gonna turn it around. God will turn. God will turn it around. He'll bring you out. He will bring you out. There will. There will be glory after this. You see, God specializes. God
Come on, give God some praise if you believe he's able. Come on, give him some praise. Why don't you do me a favor? And I want you to come to the altar today. And it's the first Sunday of the year. This is our time to thank God. You know, we look forward to things to come, but we should look back and thank God for keeping us a mighty long way. If God has kept you, you ought to say amen. If God has kept you, you ought to say hallelujah. And for that, we should bow our heads to the Father and say, Lord, you kept me. You kept me through a mighty long way. And Father, because you kept me, I believe that there's a season ahead, that there's something that you have in store for me. I want to say to you, my brothers and sisters, that God has a purpose and God has a plan for your life. If you still have breath in your body, God has a purpose and God has a plan for your life. So a good time in this time of year in the very beginning, we should bow our heads and say, Lord, I want to follow you. Lord, I want you to order my steps. Lord, order my stops. Lord, I pray that you will guide me and lead me even throughout this new year. And I believe when you go to God first in a new year, I believe that God will bless your life. I believe God will protect your life. I pray that God continues to guide you each and every day. So let's just go to God for a moment again. Talk to God. Pray right now. Thank him for health and strength. Thank him for your family. Thank him even for all of those that are around you right now. You don't know what they're going through. But just the fact that they're standing around, it means that God kept them from a mighty long way. So I ask you today again to pray again for our sick and shut in. Continue to pray for our church. God has so much in store and God has so much that he wants to do and we want to make sure that all of that is completed. So with the faithful people of God, go to God in prayer. I believe that God hears us and God will answer our prayers. So as we pray, as our choir comes, this is, this is our season. This is my seat for grace, grace. for favor. Season of favor. That's what we're looking for. This is my seat to reap what I have sown. Yes. This is my seat. Oh yes. For grace, for grace, for favor. Hey, hey. Oh, yes. This is my season to reap what I have sown. Oh, set. Set. I haven't been perfect. All right. But I've shown sure been faithful. Daughter. God has a purpose. And I know he's able. I have a seed in the ground, and it's blessing, no more stressing. I have a seed in the ground, and it's growing, now it's showing. This is my seed for grace, for favor. This is my seat to reap, to reap what I have sown.
being a lawyer when we needed an advocate. So Father, today we lift you up and we magnify your name. We pray for your people knowing today that you are the one that can heal. You are the one that can deliver. So Father, we give you the honor, we give you the glory, and we give you the praise. You heard our prayer today. You heard our cry. So Father, as we go back to our seats, we're going to go back with a sense of ease. We're going to go back with a sense of confidence in knowing that you've got our back and you are going to take care of all of our needs. So, Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you, and we give you the honor again, and we give you the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people sin. Amen and amen. Come on, if you believe it today. I want you to give God some praise in this house. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. You may go back to your seats at this time. We are so blessed to have you here today. Thank you for being here on this New Year Sunday. Happy New Year to you. Come on, can somebody say Happy New Year? Amen. So good to see you on this Sunday morning. I want you to tune in to our ministry announcements. We're going to talk a little bit about our food pantry, which is blessing the lives of people. Give God some praise for our food pantry ministry. We see a long line of cars on Sundays because of what God is doing here at Mount Zion. So we're going to talk a little bit about that special New Year's message from Pastor. And we're going to talk about what we have planned for this month. Let's give God some praise one more time. And let's have our technicians play our ministry announcements. You know, it's hard to believe that there are people in our community who are going to bed hungry. In our community, with some of the area's best businesses, good schools, there are still many children who are eligible for free or reduced lunches. Believe it or not, suburban poverty is increasing at an alarming rate. For these reasons and more, food pantries provide a vital resource to our community. Here at MZOV, we typically find an increase in visits from November to February. Winter months are a critical time to support families in our surrounding community. So using the food pantry helps families who are making ends meet throughout the rest of the year and helps them stretch their budgets and save money for other critical expenses. Also, it helps them stay healthy by coming to the food pantry. Families are also able to find healthy options, helping them to fight off a nasty cold or flu during these cold weather months. But thanks to Mount Zion and our partnerships with the Food Bank and Hunger Center, our food pantries are able to provide fresh produce, even when our community gardens are not growing in the winter. Faced with the need to feed a child or perhaps multiple children, parents need the food pantry. So the food pantry is a way for us to ensure that children are getting a balanced meal at home. Also remember this, families may also seek our food pantry for a sense of community. At Mount Zion, we strive to create a welcoming atmosphere for all of our families. So during this season, we provide a sense of hope and camaraderie for those who are struggling alone. So all in all, we are grateful for our food pantry and thankful to all of our volunteers who help serve people. And also pray that God continues to bless us and that will, people will come and be served at our food pantry. Thank you, Mount Zion, for all that you do. Thank you for being a part of a great ministry that is working and continually working to serve people. Remember this, we are 
Mount Zion. God bless you. Join us in entering into 30 days of prayer between now and February. Designate a specific time and place to go into prayer with us. Pray for all areas of the church, including our continued mission, ministry, and impact during the pandemic. We are serving seniors. Outside of our daily feeding program, we now are working with local nursing homes and creating care packages with encouragement. We need your help. We will be delivering socks, gloves, hats, and blankets, and we want all of you to bring in cards of encouragement. You can drop them off on Sundays in the church foyer or during church office hours in the week. Let's be a blessing. Let's continue to fight for justice and equality. Join us on Sunday for a special MLK Sunday. All we say to America is be true to what you said on paper. Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to 2023. And I've been praying for you and everybody else in our church family. You know, this year will be your greatest year yet. I'm believing that now. I want to thank you for bringing your family and friends to Christmas services on last week. You know, it was a great service just a week ago. And that was what I call a record breaker because a lot of churches chose not to open up and they shut down on Christmas Day. We didn't. And I'm glad we did not because you showed up to worship the newborn king. So congratulations, everybody, and I love you, and I'm proud of all that you do here at the Mount Zion Church. Second, I am more excited about this new year than I've been in a long, long time. God is going to do something incredible and some incredible things in 2023, and I'm believing it right now. You know, we are planning some amazing benefits and blessings and events for you this year. I'm at 11, and you take some family pictures together. God bless you. We are staying on the move for Christ with a strong vision for the future. With the current shift in our world, it is essential that we reach the world for Jesus. Pray for the vision that God has delivered to us. And a special thank you to all those who are faithful givers and supporters of the Mount Zion Church. Thank you. You make the difference. Let's continue to share the gospel of Jesus Christ in 2021. Mount Zion, on the move for Christ. Amen. Let's give God some praise for all that he's doing here at Mount Zion. I'm going to ask if you would stand on your feet and turn your Bibles to the book of Malachi 3, 6 through 12 as we prepare for our giving time. This is a great time to give to God your first of the year offering. This is our time to sow that first seed in this new year. As we give to God, we also reflect on again the fact that God has kept us. And so when we give to God, we don't give just out of obedience. We give to God knowing that God will keep you when you stay in accordance with his word and stay in accordance with his ways. The Bible says, I will rebuke the devourer. What does that mean? That means that things that were set up to take you out, they won't take you out because God has got your back. I pray today that there's a witness here today that knows and believes that when you do what God asks you to do, he'll watch your back. When he tells you to do something, when he puts something in your, in your pathway, I believe when you follow his word, and again, when you follow his way, God will keep you and God will bless you for your faithful obedience to him. Let's go into the text in Malachi 3, 6 through 12, and we're going to read it responsibly. Even online, you can follow along and you can give through the Givelify app or mzov.org. The Bible says this. It says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say... Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. 
and prove me now near with, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let's read 12 together. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us bow our heads in a moment of thanks, thinking unto God. Thanking God for all that he's done and all that he's going to do. We believe that the best is yet to come. As we give today, we don't give grudgingly. We give cheerfully because we know what God can do and what God has done in our life. If God has done some great things in your life, somebody needs to say amen. If God is going to do some great things in your life, can somebody say hallelujah? You've got to believe it today. So as we sow this seed, we sow it with expectancy in our heart, knowing that as we give to God, God will give us more than if we had kept it to ourselves. Will you just wave your tithe, wave your offering in the air as a sign of believing in what God can do? Raise it high today. Heavenly Father, we give this to you in this first offering of the year, this first tithe of the year. I pray that you would bless it in the name of Jesus. We love you. We lift you up. And we magnify your name today. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. I'm going to ask all of those that are given a tithe and offering, you can come right now to the tithe and offering baskets. It's giving time here at Mount Zion. It's a new season. It's a new day. You can also pick up your communion at this time. Church say amen. 
Amen. As you remain standing, give God a great big hand praise, first of all, for what you have done on this first Sunday. Amen. There is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Thank you, choir. Amen. There is now no condemnation to those that are in Christ. As you remain standing, thanking God on this first Sunday for the greatest gift that he gave to us, which was his son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins. I've been looking at the book of Genesis, and in Genesis, where the Bible says God created man in his own image and breathed into him the breath of life, and he became a living soul. I was looking at that text in the original language of Hebrew, and what that means is that what God did while man was being created, being made from the dust of the earth, what God did was the very beginning. He reached down, took his face to Adam's face. And imagine this. He kissed Adam. He kissed Adam. He blew into his nostril. And he kissed Adam. The Bible said that he became a living soul. And all through the text, very softly, all through the text, all that you see is, is that God is continually kissing humankind. He kissed him first when he created him. And then, in essence, on Calvary, he redeemed man by kissing him again. And what he does to you and to me every day that we wake up, I get excited about it. He kisses us and wakes us up on time. And when we're going through our trials and tribulations, God kisses us. And what does the kiss represent? The kiss represents the fact that he loves you. So often I will be just walking through the house and I'll grab Marilyn and just kiss her. And sometimes she'll just walk through the house and just kiss me. It's her way and my way of saying that I, I love you. And, and I've said to her, I will love you forever. And what Jesus is saying to us through his sacrificial death is, very softly, I will love you forever. And, and I imagine that when we are in heaven, all, all God is doing is just constantly kissing us. The Bible says that he loved us so much that he gave himself to us, which means that he loved us and he kissed us and he keeps on kissing us. And that's why we come together on the first Sunday of the year to say, God, we thank you for kissing me, for loving me. And if you love me, you will protect me. If you love me, you will guide me. If you love me, you will not let me stay in the pain of life. If you love me, you will prepare a place for me. If you love me, you will allow me to live with you forever in your house called heaven. And if you do not know Jesus and the pardon of your sin, he's kissed you time and time again. You know he has. You went to him and you, you talked to him about a particular situation that you didn't know how it was going to come out. Maybe it was a relationship. Maybe it was a health issue. Maybe it was a loved one. I don't know, but I know that you know him. And all he is saying to you in 2023, you know me. And since you know me, why don't you hook up to me? I talked to a young brother the other week and he was talking about how he was going through certain kinds of situations. And I said to him, I almost called, he called his name up. I said to him, my brother, you know God has been speaking to you said to me, he said, Pastor, you are absolutely right. 
I said, you, you know there were times in your life you didn't know what to do and you were burning down. And he said, Pastor, you are right. I said to him, I said, God loves you. He really do love you. And then I said to him, I said, you know, do you love him? And he said, I do, Pastor. And then he said to me, I said to him, I said, if you love him, why don't you go by his house sometimes? You haven't been by his house all year long. And it's 2022 and it's almost over with. And you don't have no real excuse. You have no disease. You have your health and your strength. You are in your right mind. Why don't you go to his house sometimes and let him know how much you really love him. And when you do that, somehow he lets you know how much he really loves you. Throughout all week, my week goes better because I'm in his house on Sunday morning. Can you give God some praise that you're in his house? Is that all you're going to give him? I know you only got one hand. As you bow your heads, just tell him how much you're grateful for him and allowing him to be in your house. And I'm, I'm appealing to somebody who is not in the church, who has been visiting the church, but God has led you here. And you know inside of your very spirit that he has led you to the Mount Zion Church. I'm appealing to you right now. I want you to give your life to Christ. I want you to come back to the church. Is there anybody in the house? As every head is bowed, no one is looking up around. Is there anybody in the house? You're not in church looking for a church. God has led you to this church. If you're here and you don't have a church home or you've not been baptized, it's a way of saying that I love God and God loves me. I'm going to follow his word. If there's anybody in the house and you know you need to be here, would you raise your hand if you don't have a church home very quickly? We'll extend the invitation a little early. If you're here today, would you lift up your hands? You don't have a church home. Is there anybody here who has not been baptized by water? Lift your hand up. All right. Is there anybody in the house who needs to rededicate themselves to the Lord? I'm lifting my hand up right now because I know I ain't done all that I need to do. How about you? Can you lift your hand up with me? I won't call you up. Don't feel afraid. God, we're praying for these who have lifted their hands up, making a, a, a New Year uh, commitment to you, and they want to be closer to you. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, we pray. The Bible says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed. He took the common loaf of bread. You may open up your receptacle. He took the common loaf of bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you, and this do in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. The Bible says, In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. I'm kissing you with it. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of of me and whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's love and death until he comes again let us drink together amen all the people of God said amen give God another shout out say amen amen you may go to your seat amen order my stuff say your word dear Lord lead me guide me every day send your anointing father I pray order my steps in your word all right, I'm going to be real long today. It's my first sermon. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, he should not be real long today. Say, neighbor, he should not be real short today either. As you turn your Bibles to the book of Judges, the book of Judges, the book of Judges. How many of you have read the book of Judges lately? The first chapter, verse 19. Amen. Verse 19. Amen. Judges, first chapter, verse 19, verse 19. Amen. Here's what it says. Repeat after me, just one verse. The Lord, the Lord, until everybody say it together. The Lord was with the men of Judah. They took possession of the mountain or the hill country. 
but they were unable to drive out the people in the valley or from the plains because they had iron chariots. You know, I've discovered that it's easy to give up on life. It's easy to give up on situations. It's easy to give up on things. It's easy to give up on people. And it's easy to give up on yourself. Especially when things are tough and rough. But I made a commitment today after hearing a song by uh, Torin Wells, who wrote a song entitled, Ain't No Way I'm Giving Up. Ain't no way. Say, ain't no way. I'm giving up. And what Torin was saying is, is that through trials and tribulations, problems and situations, he refused to give up. And so he said, I, ain't no way. Ain't no way I'm giving up because I see victory at hand. I got excited about that song this morning. I was singing it as I came to church today because I said to myself, I made it through 2022. Can you give God some praise? Can I say it to somebody else who's been in the hospital? I made it through 2022. I've had problems. I've had trials. I have tribulations. I've had relationship problems. I had money problems. I had some times when things looked good. Other times they were bad. I slept all night. Other times... I couldn't sleep a wink, but somehow I made it through. Ain't no way I'm going to get to year 2023 and decide to let it go. Ain't no way, he says, that I'm giving up. And then he, he pushes it from a personal level to a, if you will, a social or other level. And he says, ain't no way. You are going to give up. And I'm here to tell you that somebody here who is going through something, ain't no way you're going to give up. I, I know you've had a loss, but ain't no way you're going to give up. I know you've had some issues in your health, but ain't no way. I wish I had an 11 o'clock crowd here today. Ain't no way you're going to give up. I, I know it's not the job that you want. It to be, but I want you to know, for right now, you're just not going to give up. I, I know you've been depressed, but ain't no way you're going to give up. Even, I'm going to be finished here, in the midst of mountain experiences and low valley situations. That's, that's all the text is going to talk about. Mountain experience. You know, there was a lady by the name of Shirley Caesar who used to sing a song, I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain. And no matter how rough it gets in 2023, I'm coming up even on the rough side of the mountain. But David says, not only ought you to go up on the rough side of the mountain, but in the 23rd Psalms, he says, I'm going to get through my valley experiences. And he says it this way very quickly. He says, yea, though I walk. You see, sometimes when you're going through the valley, you can't run through the valley. God does not allow you in that particular situation to run and rush through the valley. But rather, he says that every now and then, you just got to walk through the valley. Don't rush it. Just take it one step at a time. I'm, am I talking to somebody in the house? He says, just walk through the valley and know that you can walk through the valley in 2023. There will be some more valley experiences. There will be some more mountain experience. Just because an old year has left us does not mean a new year does not keep us with certain mountain and valley experiences. But the Bible says in the 23rd Psalm, yay, hey, Though I walk through, I'm going to get through it. The valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear no evil because there is always someone, I'm going to get happy myself, who walks with me through valley experiences. 
Just tap the person on the shoulder next to you and just say, you're going to get through that valley. Say, you're going to get through the mountains. Even if, if on the rough side of the mountain. And that's what God is saying here in the book of Judges, chapter 1, verse 19. Here they are. They have come through the wilderness, and they are getting ready to go into the promised land. But they do not go into the promised land, y'all need to get this, without challenges, <laughs> without taking some risks. And, and what they're going to understand very quickly is, is that where there are high risk, there's always high rewards. When you take no risk, you receive no rewards. If you think life is a crystal stair, as Langston used to, as Langs, Langston Hughes says, then you're going to find out it's got some bumps and some rugged spots along the way. Y'all putting me to sleep and I'm, am I putting you to sleep? What, what was I saying? Can you tell your neighbor what I was saying? It's going to be rough. And so they are coming on the other side of the promised land, but they only are coming because they have taken some risk before they get there. In 40 years, they have seen nothing but death. A generation of people have died out at the edge of the promised land. And they're getting ready to go into the promised land, and they discover that there are some enemies. I'm almost finished. Enemies in the mountains and enemies in the valley. Enemies in the mountains and enemies in the valley. And God is going to say to them, watch this, you're going to get through what you're getting ready to go through. And, and, and there ought not to be no way you're going to give up. And here's what he says is one of the ways that you know that you don't give up is whenever God makes a promise in advance. He says in verse 1, I have given you the land. I have given you the land. And the word given is, is not given in the future tense, but rather it is in the present tense. He says, in essence, oh, I wish I could preach it. He said, I've already given you the blessing. I've already given you the promise. You can walk in your anointing and your consecration. You can walk in the joy of your salvation because I've already given it to you in advance. You haven't yet got there, but you have to walk into the anointing and consecration that I'm calling you into, and the blessing is already there. You cannot wait till the battle is over, but rather, mm -mm -mm. you ought to shout right now because when the Lord says it, it's already done. If he told you, I'll make a way out of no way, don't worry about any doors in front of you. If he says, I'll be with you to the ends of the earth and to the ends of the edge, don't worry about somebody else being around you. The Bible says that God will make your enemies your footstool. Has it ever happened to you? Has it ever happened to you? Has not God made your enemies your footstool? And he does it in advance. I don't know about you, but I'm already prophesying all my life. I'm prophesying if I have to go through heartaches and pain, the Lord has already made a way out. If I have to deal with painful relationships, the Lord has already dealt with the relationship. If I have to go through curves that this nation throws at me, I already know that there's a catcher behind me. Have I got a witness in the house? Won't he do it? He says, I'm going to bless you in advance. I have given you it. All you have to do is walk in your consecration. So what do they do? Very quickly. They consecrate themselves first. They're ready to do what the Lord says do. And when you are in obedience to God in advance, God is going to be obedient to his commitment and what he said he would do. Can I help y'all? Here they are. 
the Israelites, and they're getting ready to go into the promised land, but there's somebody who is in their place. Somebody got what belongs to them. Somebody is there who ought not to be there. Somebody is creating heartaches and headaches for them that ought not to be creating them. And the Bible calls them the mountain or hill people. They are the enemy. And the enemy is in a high place. And they have to conquer the enemy. They've got to conquer the Canaanites who have possessed what belongs. Boy, I wish I could preach it there. What belongs to them. Something and someone has stolen what belongs to them. Uh, I just got this pair of, uh, uh, parenthetically that uh, somebody has allowed somebody to steal something that belongs to you. And what belongs to you is your joy. I wish I had two witnesses in the house. David said, I have to confess that the joy of my salvation has been taken away from me. I, I used to come to church happy. I used to wake up thanking God. No matter what went on in my life, I was still praising the Lord on an anyhow praise. Anybody ever done that? It, it didn't matter what the choir was singing. It didn't matter what the day was. It didn't matter whether it was snowing or sunshine. I was going to praise God anyhow. But there are some folk who have allowed Satan to steal their joy. And your joy is dependent upon any and everything than what it ought to be dependent upon. I don't know where it's coming from. Your joy ought not depend upon about, uh, what day it is. It shouldn't depend upon uh, how many people show up or don't show up. It shouldn't depend upon who sung or done sung. The joy is on the inside. And the songwriter said, this joy I have, the world didn't give it. And since the world didn't give it, the world can't take it away from me. And so therefore, I'm going to keep my joy. I'm not going to allow somebody to invade my space. Have I got a witness in the house? If I'm in church and somebody is over there next to me, looking all mean and ugly, can on, I'm just going to throw up my one finger, jump up and get on to the other side of the church and leave them over there because I ain't going to let nobody steal the joy of my salvation. I know what the Lord has done for me. I know how he's brought me out. I know how he's brought me another year. I know how he's brought me another day. I know how he's brought me another year. I know how he's done good for me. I know anybody here knows about him. Has he done anything for you? Is he doing anything for you right now? Ain't he making a way for you? Ain't he being a friend in an unfriendly world? Ain't he being a mother for the motherless? Ain't he being a father for the fatherless? Ain't he being a doctor in a sick room? Hasn't he been a lawyer in a courtroom? Hasn't he been your everything? He's been a fence all around you. Has he not been a fence around you? He protected you from all hurt, 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 harm and danger. Some of us should have been dead and gone a long time ago. But I stopped by to tell you, something kicked in one day. It's called grace of God. Didn't you hear Terrence talk about it? He said the grace of God, unmerited favor of God. Somebody called it amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Ah, anybody here know what I'm talking about? Ah, I once was lost, couldn't see. Amazing grace. Come on, stand on your feet. I'll pick it up later on and wake up at 11 o'clock. Mountain. Somebody invading their space and they were able to conquer the folk in the hill or in the mountain in high places, lofty places. And, and the truth of the matter is most of us can conquer our mountain experience. We want a career and we conquer the mountain of getting a career. We want degrees. I got so many degrees on my wall, I'm getting ready to take them down. Mountain experience. We finally got married. We finally got that, that house with the white picket fence. We, we finally was able to settle our minds down. We finally become senior citizens and have two cents to rub together. 
We've been able to conquer our mountain. The people in our spaces, we've been able to conquer that. But then when it comes down to the valley, the Bible said that there were two brothers, Judah, the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Simeon went out and said, when everybody else do not believe that they can conquer their mountains, we can conquer the people in the mountains. And the Bible says that they went into the mountains and they conquered the mountain people, the mountain Canaanite dwellers, inhabitants of the high mountain. But then God said, not only are you to conquer your mountains, conquer your valleys, your low places, your rough places, your dark places, your foggy places, places that you really don't understand. And the Bible says that their problem was that they projected the enemy to be bigger than he was. What do I mean? Here they are. They're going down into the valley and suddenly they see giant men. They were already giants. Now they look even larger, taller, bigger. How so? Because a new invention came along called ch iron or chariots of iron. And so they look at these, these Canaanites in the valley and, and they look taller because they are now, put my chariots up there, they now are standing tall on a chariot riding in iron looking like gods himself. And suddenly they began losing the battle. I, I don't know what valleys you're going to have to go through or I'm going to have to go through. But you need to know that, that when you see things to be bigger than they really are, just remember they are never bigger than they really are. Y'all get that later. Whatever you and I have to go through in 20, you know, we thought that that, that virus was the biggest thing we ever would have to conquer ever. And that we would not be able to conquer them because they are iron chariots. They, it looked it bigger than it was. But look at us now. We are here. Just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you here. And you were able to conquer that valley. Let me tell you something. I close here. Deal with your mountains. Get up on top. But remember the things that trip us out are these low kinds of things that we call low, but we have projected them to be bigger than they really are. What am I saying? We can conquer a big career. We can conquer a great job. We can conquer a new community. But then we lose our family. We lose our kids. We lose our children. We don't think about feeding nobody else that is hungry. We don't think about helping clothing nobody who needs a blanket, who needs a coat who needs some gloves during the winter time, who needs some of these. These are valley things. They are low. Sometimes it just, you know, I wish I could go home, but I won't. I better stop here, Larry, because if I go home, they won't stick around for the 11 o'clock service. Bow your heads and just thank God right now. Tell him how you want him to be with him. He says, I have given you. I have made it where you are going to conquer these experiences. Give me that commitment. PowerPoint. One before that. Synonym to complete commitment. What you must give God this year is complete commitment. Total commitment. If you might have, if you're going to have some mountains and the valleys, you have to give him some total commitment this year. You've got to give him pure commitment. You've got to give him full commitment. You've got to give him your absolute commitment. You've got to give him your entire commitment in 2023. If you want him to help you conquer the mountains and the valleys. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this time that you've allowed us to assemble in this place. We thank you for reminding us ain't no way we're going to give up. And whatever the battles may be, whatever the experiences are, we are not going to give up. And you brought us too far now, God. You brought us through decades. You brought us through trials and tribulations. Most of us came through periods 
of civil rights. Most of us came through economic struggles. Most of us came through high prices and gases. And, and, and just recently we came through COVID and we're going through COVID. We have our families. Ain't no way. With your help, we are going to give up. Remind us, oh God, that we ought not to lean upon our own understanding, but in all our ways to consider you. And you will direct our path. Come on, give God a great big hand, praise. Turn to your neighbor, just say, neighbor, ain't no way you're going to give up in 2023. Give them a nice wave and tell them, God bless you. Happy New Year's. Can you say something? Tell them a Happy New Year. Consider yourself this day. Hey. So long. Tell all your problems goodbye. So long, my man. I trust 